Blessings, ladies. I'm super excited to be here. Super excited. Right now, you guys, I am in London. I am in London. Um, but I still had to show up for this assignment for this annual beautiful and crowned conference. Apostle Verinda, first, I want to give honor to you. Thank you for allowing me to be on this platform for everyone who's here to ready to hear about transformational leadership. Look, if you haven't grabbed your pen and your paper, I know I'm the last one, but if you haven't, if you don't have your notebooks out, you need to go grab a notebook. You need to hit a voice recorder button. You need to use your phone, notepad, whatever you need to do to take notes because I like interaction. Even though I'm not physically live with you guys, I am still going to act like I am here, right? So we're going to be talking about transformation or leadership guys way. And the first thing I wanted to talk about, instead of going in and chopping it up and talking about what you sh what transformational leadership should be, I wanted to take it back to the base. So I first wanted to talk about what is a transformed leader, because we're talking about positive transformational leadership God's way. So what is a transformed leader, right, That that's out doing um, the things of God, that's out transforming the community and the people that's around them? So first, a transformed leader, you guys, first I want to go ahead and say, I disclaimer, I did not get this definition from Webster. This is a definition of revelation from what a transformed leader, leader is that's doing it God's way. So a transformed leader is a leader that has repented of certain behaviors and operate in new behaviors. They don't do the things they used to do. They have a renewed mind and a new way of thinking. And therefore they have a manifestation of new actions, which influences and impacts others. So I want to take that back, you guys, right? When we jump into and say that we are going to be transformational leaders, we first have to come to a place of repentance. And repentance, we know, does not mean I'm sorry, right? Repentance means to change your mind. It comes from the Greek word metanoia, which means to change your mind. Basically, it's a, a, a rebuilding or a healing process. So therefore, when you go through repentance, you no longer have modified behavior. You do not have to attempt to modify your behavior and say you have changed, but you have literally changed your mind, which then changes your behavior. So therefore, you're not living in a slave mentality of trying to perform, but let, but rather you become. So transfer, transformational leaders become because of repentance. And when you repent, you're then able to walk in and be a transformational leader. But there's three questions I want to start off with you guys with that I want to plug in your ears before I go deeper into just some other nuggets. I wanted to introduce three questions for you guys. Um, when stepping into transformational leadership, one of the questions is, who are you changing? Who are you called to, right? Most people will say, who are you? That means who you call to. The second question is, um, what are you changing? So what is the problem? Whether you're going into um, being a transformational leader in the marketplace, you're going out because you're solving an issue. When you're becoming a transformational leader within the ministry, you're going out and you're changing, having people set free from bondage and their souls being um, given to Christ, right? So that's the problem. We want to free people from the hand of the enemy when it comes to ministry, and we want to solve the in the marketplace the issues in the business world. And then number three is how, the what, the statement, what is the state? What is your state, excuse me, while you're bringing about change? Which means, are you healthy? There are three questions that I just want you guys to hold on to. Because when it comes to transformation or leadership, there are some things they have to do. And I do want y'all to write this down. They model the way. That means that you become or you, you get put on a level of influence where people begin to look at what you do. So it no longer matters what you say. People don't really necessarily do what you say. They do what you do. For instance, if I tell you guys right now and I say, you guys, touch your nose. And you you guys probably right now would have touched your, um, your eye because you know why? You followed what I did versus listening to what I said to do. So a lot of people would do what you do, not what you say. So as a transformational leader, you model the way for others. And then you encourage the hearts of others. So that means you are that person there to help them see what's inside of them that they don't see. When they become disappointed, when they don't want to go forth, you are that leader that helped to bring about the transformation by helping them unlock and to see what they potentially probably don't see. You also share, um, inspire a shared vision. So transformational leaders are team builders. They share their vision with people. They And, and people connect with that shared vision. 
so that you can continue to build the kingdom or in the marketplace. They enable others to act. That means they're not selfish. Transformational leaders realize that it's enough for them to go around. So they don't withhold information. They don't smother people who are under their, their gifts. They are confident in who they are so others can act and become who they're supposed to be. And they also challenge the status quo. Transformational leaders are always looking for a way to be different. They don't have to be a same. Transformational leaders will look at what's trending and say, I'm going to do something different. Transformational leaders tap out of the box. They are creative. They do what people say can't get done. They're visionaries. They're forerunners, right? So today I want to ask yourself, I want you to ask yourself, am I modeling this way? Am I modeling the God way? Am I encouraging the hearts of others? Am I in sharing this vision to inspire others so they can come on my team and it doesn't have to be a one person show? Or am I enabling others to act? So am I healthy, right? And am I challenging the status quo? Am I being a copycat? Or am I really doing what God has called me to do? See, when you are a transformational leader, there's a mandate on your assignment for and to healthy change. So you are not a transformational leader just to have a lot of followers. You are a transformational leader to bring about change. So I wanted to say these things. I know you guys went back, you heard those questions that I asked. So it's some things, these are not all the steps, but it's some steps, about five of them, that I want to introduce to you guys about um, how you can start operating and being this transformational leader a healthy, a healthy way, in a positive way. So the first one is, I want to tell, I want you to tell somebody, or I want you to put in the comments, right? Because we live on Zoom. I want you to put in the comments, check your roots. Check your roots. As a transformational leader, we have to constantly check our roots. They operate in God's love. Is your root the love of God? Because see, where love is absent, law is present. Because law likes to control the narrative. And when you control the narrative, there can never be a relationship. Because it's always going to be what you say, how you see it, how it should go. But when you are a transformational leader and you are trying to bring people on your team, you're trying to team build, you're trying to speak to their heart, you're trying to encourage them, then you have to operate in the love of God. You cannot be controlled. There has to be a relationship. Rules without relationship brings rebellion. You notice people will do things just because they're in relationship. They'll just have a mutual respect. And you don't have to beg them to respect you because a relationship is there. So we have to operate and ensure that love is present. God love is present. See, when there is no love, by default, you invite fear. And I'm going to back that up. Second Timothy 1 says, for God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind. So that means that if you don't have, if you have fear, then you have no power, you have no love, and you have no sound mind which is linked to no self-control. So therefore, when you don't love and you're not operating as a transformational leader with love, you are hiding in the dark. You're even hindering God to reach you. I remember it was sometime back, I had did a, 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 a sermon on um, the man, the lame man who was laying there, right? That didn't want to get up and had excuses. And the, the, the name of it was frozen by an unfruitful root. He was literally frozen by an unfruitful root. See, fear hinders you. It keeps you weak. It keeps you incapable of receiving love, of even to give love. But see, 1 John 4 and 18 says, there is no fear in love. So therefore, if you have fear, there is no love. But perfect love drives out fear because fear has to do with punishment. And the one who fears is not made perfect in love. So we want to tell you again, I want to tell you again, transformational leaders, inspiring transformational leaders, check your root. Are you operating in the love of God? See, when you operate in fear, I also want to introduce to you that you, by default, will begin to walk in a lack of humility. Why do I say that? Because when you walk in a, a, a fear, you're always on guard. You're always on defense. You always think someone's out to get you, right? And that makes you prideful because you'll start listening to self instead of spirit. You begin to follow flesh instead of the spirit man. And we know that James 4 and 6 say he gives grace to the humble and he opposes the proud. So therefore, transformational leaders, if you want to be effective, 
right? Because you can say you could be a transformational leader because you can transform. It's either you could transform positively or negatively. But if you're trying to be an effective, positive leader, you want to ensure that you're not operating in pride, which means that you don't introduce fear, which means that you operate in love. The second point that I want to point out is having an identity, knowing who you are. So I want to ask you, do you really know who you are in God? Because if you don't know who you are in God, the enemy will come to snatch out what you don't even know was there. Why? Because you didn't know what was there. <laughs> when you don't know who you are, you will answer to anything. So people would tell you, you're called to transfer young men when God says you're called to transform young women. So you need to know who you are. And it's not good enough to just know who you are. You need to know who you are called to and also what you carry. Because when you can say, I am called to lead in this area, but if you really don't know the giftings and what you carry, when people come in and throw their two cents in and say, you can't do it, and you don't know that you really carry that power, you will shrink back and no longer walk in the call that God has calling you to do. See, the enemy will come to steal, kill, and destroy when you don't recognize your enemy. He will come to steal the word of God and what God says about you. He will come to destroy your walk with God. In turn, you will stop walking closely with God because you will feel just lifeless. I don't know what I'm called to do. I don't see it. I don't, I don't even feel like who I'm supposed to be. And then ultimately, your destiny will be destroyed. So coming into the fullness of identity will also give you your why. And then we will also know as a transformational leader to remain effective and positive is how we are operating in our why. What is our why? Is our why tainted? I want to get um, share with you a revelation that changed my life. When I realized that even being a transformational leader out here, that I don't need money, but money need me, it changed everything. Because see, the God says that the love of money, the Bible says, it declares that the love of money is the root of evil right? The love of it. So when we begin to realize that we don't have to need money, that money needs us to unlock and to build the kingdom, then we can stay in a place, in a spiritual place where we stay humble before God, realizing that I'm not trusting money to do what you can do, God. I don't need money. I need you. I don't need money. I need you, God. So I'm not putting, I'm making my money bow down to God. And so therefore I'll stay in a place of staying in the will of God and not beginning to love money. And therefore my why will not become tainted when I'm operating as a transformational leader. Number three, transformational leaders seek constant deliverance. I want you guys to write that down. They seek constant deliverance. They're not fearful, right? They don't walk around in pride and act like they have it all together. They constantly seek deliverance because they know who they are. People watch what they do. They know that what comes out of them will be imparted into someone else. So they constantly seek deliverance. They do not operate in an Egypt mindset and they are intentional about their healing. So for you guys this here, if you declare that you are a healthy, healthy transformational leader, I want you to, to declare these things with me. I am no longer a slave. Look, somebody can put them in the comments. I am no longer a slave. I am a daughter. I no longer think like a slave. I no longer act like a slave. I no longer speak like a slave. I no longer reason like a slave. I no longer expect like a slave. See, I was reminded, remember you guys, I don't know if you know, but in Exodus 13, 17, read over when you have time. But when Pharaoh let the people go, God did not lead them through the place of the Philistines. He said, because they may hear the war and change their minds and go back. See, as a transformational leader, you have to always ensure that when you get out of Egypt, then you need to take Egypt out of you. So transfer leaders are constantly renewing their mind. Remember that, that definition that I gave from the beginning? They're constantly renewing their mind so they don't return back to a place of bondage. They don't return back to that place of fear. They don't return back to that place of I'm not good enough. They don't return back to that place that I don't have the finances to do it. I, they don't return back to that place of I'm not qualified. They, they keep going and they take Egypt out of them. See, when you are transformational leader, you have to come to a place where, where you no longer see things as constantly being offended or, um, because slaves see things as always abusive. When they see something similar, they automatically go in defense. And see, when you are a transformational leader, you have to realize that similar is not the same. 
goes back to being healthy. When you are a transformational leader and you dealt with somebody that was on your team that did you wrong and somebody show up, look just like them, how are you operating? Has the slave mindset been taken out of you? Or do you go into defense? Oh, I got to keep them far because they look just like such and such. I remember when such and such did me just like this. Similar is not the same. Transformational leaders, Egypt has to go. When you are operating and calling yourself a transformational leader. See, see transformational leaders don't self-sabotage because they're healthy. And when we're talking about per, uh, positive um, transformational leaders. So I just want to go over just a couple ways, just a couple ways really quick, because I know I'm coming now in my time on how to ensure that you're constantly walking in deliverance. So first, we all know this, give your life to Christ and confess Christ, and then submit you and your will to Christ. A lot of times as a transformational leader, we got goals, we got visions, right? But we never commit our ways unto the Lord. We just jump and say, this is what's in my heart. But is that the desire that God placed in your heart after you've been diligently seeking Is that really the desire? Is that what you want to do? Or is that what God has called you to do? So you have to constantly submit you and your will. And then you have to come to acknowledge. And God is a God who, who is an acknowledgement God. He wants you to acknowledge him in all your ways. So to constantly be delivered, you have to realize and say, God, I'm dealing with some, some things that's not right within me right now. I'm still dealing with some struggles. I'm still dealing with some trauma. I'm still dealing with some hurt. And I acknowledge that. And I want to be a healthy transformational leader. So you acknowledge and you have that self kind of um, accountability. And then part of that deliverance is you change your mind and you get uncomfortable with being uncomfortable. And then you got to separate from those triggers. So if you're trying to leave, if you're trying to say that you're about to become a transformational leader and you're about to impact some people, you first have to go back and change your environment. Who are you around? Who's imparting into you? And I want to say this, that's going to also shift you. There's a lot of people that say, I don't let everybody in my ear. It's not about how many is who. Because if you got a thousand positive people imparting some greatness into you, you're going to be great. So it's not about how many, it's who. Who's around? Who's What circle are you in? And then we all know that there's prayer. Prayer constantly while on this journey of being a transformational leadership, um, being a transformational leader, seeking guidelines, seeking um, strategies from God. A lot of times, there's nothing wrong with business coaches, y'all. There's nothing wrong with mentors. It's nothing wrong with that. But you also want to make sure you connect it to the main source. Sometimes God will download strategic blueprints just for you that you can't get from anybody else. Transfer Because He's he put a vision in your heart. You committed it back to him. And now he's downloading strategy. And then the others that are around you are around to help confirm and pull some other things within to help you give birth. So what is the solution other than that to leaving Egypt, that Egypt mindset, and walking positively um, as a transformational leader? This is my last nugget, y'all. Oh, no, that's not two more nuggets. It is maturity. Maturity is becoming. So I want to point out that Galatians 4, 1 and 3, the hair, as long as he is a child, does not differ from at all from a slave. You hear that? As a child, you differ no different than a slave. Though he is a master of all, he is the guardians and stewards until the time appointed by his father. By his father. Basically, this is just saying that God, ain't going, God is not going to do it until you get mature enough. So to be a, an, a positive um, transformational leader, you want to come to a place of maturity. Because when you're in a place of maturity, you will not mishandle things. And when I talk about mishandle things, I'm not just talking about the vision God gave you. You won't mishandle the people that he sent you to either help you or the people he sent to you to for you to raise up. You have to trust the process by becoming fully who you're supposed to be. Maturity is about revelation of who the father is to you and who he's called you to be. And the response to that revelation is becoming. I remember what in 1 Corinthians 13, 4 and 5, where it talks about, you know, all those things about love, love is patient, love is kind, right? All those characteristics. But if you read down farther, Paul even goes down and says, when I was a child, I act like a child. I speak like a child. But when I became a man, I put away those childish things. What he was saying is I, when I became mature, I was even able to love like that. So when you become mature, you're able to be a positive leader. 
you're even able to recognize the things you need to change. When you become mature, you become to a place where you know you need to repent. You won't have a problem saying I'm seeking deliverance because it's a place of maturity and not a place of what I'm trying to look like and that I'm trying to have clout or I'm afraid of what they think about me. Because we know that true transformation comes from first, what? Dealing with ourselves. So what you mismanage, you will lose. So if God's sending you the people and you're not at that level of maturity as a transformational leader, you have the ability to tra um, transform negatively. God will not give you the money, the people, the room, or the doors if you don't store it. So as transformational leaders coming to the end, you guys, you want to be a good store over your time and influence. Because I'm telling you, you become a transformational leader where they say the anointing also attract lives. People will begin to pull and pull and pull because they know the anointing that you bring will begin to shift atmospheres. It will begin to change people. It begins to change minds. And so you have to make sure that you are a good steward over the time that God gives you, meaning the time that you give to others as well as the time that you give to God. So the more time you're constantly giving to others, you're, let, you're not sitting at the feet of Jesus. And this is what I call a feral spirit. When this spirit comes in and makes you extra busy, you busy, 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 and you don't have the time to, to even sit at the feet of people, but you say you constantly imparting as a transformational leader. Real good transformational leaders sit at the feet of Jesus. Right. Don't fall into the feral spirit, overworking yourself, slaving yourself, not being a good steward over your over your time. So I uh, first I want to say I want you guys to say these three things. I will manage my time. Or you can put them in the comments, but I would love for you to say it to declare it out your mouth. I will protect my time. I will value my time. Things may demand my time, but don't deserve my time. So. With everything I said, y'all, everything that I said, being a transformational leader, I want you to go back to those three questions. Those three questions that I asked. Who is changing? After hearing everything, you got to operate in God's love. You got to have an identity. You got to let Egypt leave you. You got to seek deliverance. You got to be a good steward and have maturity as a transformational leader. Who's changing? Really, it's not really all who God called you to. It's you. As a transformational leader, you change. You change so others can change. What are you changing? You're changing anything about you that is not like God. Because we're going to have positive transformational leadership God's way. So what are you doing that could be self-sabotaging? What are you saying about yourself that could be self-sabotaging? Um, are your roots really the root of God? Are you healed? Are you helped? Is there a season that you have to sit out to bring about positive transformational leadership? And to really knock it down, what state are you in? And that's a, that's a question that all of us as transformation and in just leadership, but we should constantly ask ourselves, what state am I in when I'm bringing about this change, which is constantly self-checking? Because we do have a tendency to can check everybody else, but we we kind of go back and shrink back when it's time to check ourselves. But we as leaders, as transformational leaders, to be a transformational leader, you first, as a leader, have to repent of certain behaviors to operate in new behaviors. You do not need to do certain things that you used to do that were not effective. You have to renew your mind into a way of thinking to therefore have the manifestation of new actions and influences that would impact and impart into others in a positive way. Thank you, Apostle um, Verinda, for having me on this platform. I pray that you all go out and continue to operate, move, change, shake your environments with the positive transformational leadership God's way. Thank you.